Hi, my name is Stacy Pascal Gaspar, and I am the writer and director of Soñadora. I love color. If you guys don't notice, like I'm wearing this bright orange jacket, but um, for me, color theory is something I use a lot in my work and every color I use, there's a meaning to it in my work. And for me, red and blue, the warm and cool tones, um, it was resembling and capturing the essence of the Caribbean, specifically Haiti, um, you know, the flag is like red and blue. Um, and there's a lot of flags in the Caribbean where it's like the red and the blue is very powerful. And I think for me, um, with Maribel's story in Soñadora, I wanted it to show the cool, warm tones, like the blue tones as the cold New York City world, you know, it's like life outside the island, it's snowy, it's concrete jungle, and the warmth that you see, like it's it's a journey, you know, it starts very cold and blue. And, you know, even her, her red that she's wearing is a more, you know, desaturated red. And then we end in the most warm, space and it's like this sense of when you're home there's this warmth even when she was with um the family you know in the kitchen it's like it was a very warm space and that was the first time we saw that warmth um so I I love just seeing how the color journey emotes an emotion you know especially for the audience because there's something about the vibrancy but also these layers and nuances that is happening in the scenes I guess I'm kind of biased because I'm a dancer. So dance was my first love. And I think, especially, you know, like the Latine and Caribbean culture, it's like music and dancing is so prominent. Um, I feel like, yeah, I, I could, she could have another artistic expression, but there's something about the freedom of when you get to dance and move, you know, and, you know, the music was original music from my team. Um, there are these talented musicians from Puerto Rico and we got to make our own salsa. And um, I actually like sang a song in the kitchen in Creole. So it's like we got to build these sounds of the island and bring the culture um, to the screen. And I think the dancing was something that I feel like everyone could connect to, but was a purest form of seeing that release, you know, because even in my log line, I was like, she finds a release through her abandoned dream of dance. And it's like sometimes whether you're a painter or a writer or a singer, sometimes when you get to, you know, do your craft, you get to find that release or find that moment to just breathe. And I, and I really connected with her because I think especially if you're an immigrant or like you know a BIPOC creative sometimes you don't have the luxury to just do your art 24 7 you know and we would really want that and I think the little moments we get to really express it in its purest form it's beautiful and and I really wanted to give her that release but also the audience you know it's like we get to see that beauty like sparkle you know it's like the fact that everything there was this element of magic and and I wanted to capture it in that way yeah um so when we were shooting it was wild because um we only Leo Vina my the star um we only had one day to rehearse and learn the dance number um, so she learned it in one day and then we did like two Zoom sessions just polishing and, you know, um, the dress was like custom made by our costume designer. So it was like 
she got to try on the de- dress, but this was like her first time moving in the dress, the shoes and everything. And I think um, compared to the other scenes, the other scenes were very, you know, there was this stillness, right? Um, you're just really in her head. And I think the cast and crew, we were just really excited to like play, you know, we got to play with more colors. We dialed up all the colors. It was like, okay, it was more naturalistic in some of the others, you know, but once we were in that transition phase, it was that Cinderella moment. And I think everyone felt it. And um, what was really beautiful is like, I think, especially with the fabric and stuff, that was something I had in my head, like, okay, how do we, this red fabric, you know, it's a motif, but it plays a part. And now we got to really go red and like play with the fabric and, and play with it coming out of, you know, um, I guess I shouldn't ruin it for people, huh? I'm not going to tell you what happened, but there's red fabric. Um, and I think it really was a great way to like, and it was our last um, scene um, the, to wrap our production. So it was a fun way to kind of like end it with a party, you know. Yeah, um, so my DP, Sade, um, she's also like Caribbean, you know, a very talented woman that we met via Zoom, I have never worked with her before. And Sonia Dora was the first project, but on our first meeting, it was like, it felt very kismet. It was like this connection and this excitement. And literally um, we had about under a month to prep, you know? And I think um, we spent days playing with fabric and trying to figure out, okay, how we're going to do this, this like transition, how we're going to get to this point and this uh, point A to point B and make it feel seamlessly, you know? And I think um, one thing that was beautiful about our collaboration is that she gave me the space to play, you know, like the, the addition, like my PD, Leanda, like I remember the flowers were something I asked a week out because I was just like, for me, that moment, I called it the, a piece of home coming to her. So a piece of the island coming to her. And I think my team, you know, um, my producer, um, my costume designer, the fact that under a month we designed and um, our seamstress was like amazing, like an outfit for our star to make her feel like like a princess, like her best self. And I think um, each person, what was very beautiful is that I got the space to try something and um, the trust was very important, but also they were bringing their best. And, and you could tell like they were invested in the story. And I think, you know, especially the visual team department, me and my DP Sade, like, we knocked it out of the park, like with all the, you know, in the state of shooting during a a pandemic and everything, it was like, wow, what we were able to pull off with a three-day shoot is beautiful. Yeah, um, well, I think, you know, definitely in my original script, it was originally 10 pages and I cut it down to nine pages. Um, So there was a scene, um, I don't wanna ruin it because I do wanna put it when I expand the story, but you know, that was gonna be an additional location, an additional company move that could really affect our finale scene. So I had to make the executive decision of like letting it go. um, Cause there was a part we got to really see her near the dance studio and like, Um, seeing that connection she has with dance and I had to like condense it and that's where the telephone booth and the dancers that's the way I kind of was able to pivot that and still try to put across this subtle connection without like you know in your face like she's a dancer but like you know just toying it a little bit and I think um, another challenge was casting you know um we like it was based in New York, but we shot 
in LA. Um, and there's not a lot of like Caribbean Latinos in LA. There's, there's, they're here. Like the Caribes are around, but I think, you know, specifically for Maribel, I needed someone that was a dancer, um, Haitian American, can speak Creole and, um, you know, just all the talents. And I literally, Leovina, I slid in her DMs. I, I did the casting and I was like looking for people and someone suggested, oh, you should reach out to her. She was like a dance major and she's an actress and she was in San Diego and literally like we, I messaged her, hop on a Zoom. I was like, hi, I have this movie. I think you would be great. Can we talk about it? I promise this is not a spam. And we connected, you know, I think she read the script and, and realized this connection, you know, also being like Haitian American from New York. Um, so it was like, it was a diamond that I found in the sea of um, Instagram. But I think we casted her close to about a week out, you know, so it was just quickly just go time for everything. So with the film, I was also part of a program, The Rising Voices, you know, with Indeed and Hillman Grad and the team from like 271 Films and Ventureland. And we got selected, the 10 filmmakers got selected in March and I had about three weeks to prep and then we were shooting. So I think everything was very quick. And, you know, this movie was very ambitious to do, to prep and put on, on its feet. And I think, you know, everyone was like all hands on deck, even my music team, all the original music, we created that under a week. Um, we had like rough cut temps to rehearse, well, for my choreographer to create a choreography and then our um, actress, Leovina, to learn the piece. And by the time we were shooting, we had like the final music. So our um, steady cam op and everyone kind of knew the movements and everything, but yeah. For me, Sonia Dora, um, so before I started directing, I was in a dance program and I was acting. So I was on the other side of the camera doing the hustle. And when I got into film school, AFI, um, I was just trying to think of like, what are the stories I've been craving to see that I'm, I wish I saw as an actress, these sides come to my email, you know, through my email and, um, I feel, especially as a Caribbean woman, as an Afro-Latina, as a first gen, like there's so many layers to who I am and all these languages, all these stories and journeys. But then there was this box of, okay, this is the only definition of what you can do or what you can be. Um, and for me, when I, you know, when the lockdown happened, school went online, you know? So it was like, I took this risk, to go to film school. I didn't go to film school in undergrad. I was gonna be a doctor. I was a pre-med major, you know, first gen kid taking the chance to do films. People are like, what are you gonna do? And I'm like, okay, let's take this chance. And I think I started building, I call it the Stacy verse, but I started building this little universe. It's pretty big now, but of stories and films that I, would love to see or within my career span I'm able to put out and Sonia Dora was inspired by my grandmother's story um you know when she moved to the U.S. she moved to New York City she had a daughter which is my mother um and my mother was um back in the island and waiting for that day to be able to come to the U.S. and you know my mom didn't get to the U.S. until she was pregnant with me you know, and I think um, there's definitely this journey, especially for Black Caribbean women and Afro-Latinas and, and communities we haven't really seen highlighted, but in a way that I didn't want to show like, okay, the, the typical like, here's the trauma, here's the very sad immigrant story, but it's like, Life is not so black and white. There's a lot of gray areas. Sometimes you take a step thinking you are doing it for the better and it takes 
some directions that you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm trying to do this for the better. So I think for me, um, to be able to put like a woman's story that she's this dreamer and, you know, back in her home, she is this talented dancer. And the fact that the only thing that might be able to experience that is these concrete industrial um, factories and walls and um, machines around her. And, you know, there's so many people I would hear that are like, beautiful singers or they were musicians and you know now they're just working and trying to chase that American dream or that hustle for their family and it's like maybe the only time you might hear their voice is in that factory you know or in that workspace and I think I wanted to really not only celebrate um, my grandmother and honor her but also like inspire and give people this glimpse of hope of what um, sometimes taking risks might look like, but also when you get that key, you know, it's, there's a feeling of like, I'm going to be okay. And, and yeah, so I think, um, so now it was a lot of inspiration of like, not only, okay, my grandmother's story, my mother's story, but also my story, like my mother played the mom on the phone you know, so she got to experience being an actor. My sister played the friend. So I got to bring my family in that experience and um, tell this beautiful story that wasn't forced or like look at her, but just like walk in a day in a life with her and let's get this release and see her in her beauty. Yeah. You know, it started as a feature I was writing. Um, So um, I literally stopped writing the feature, wrote the short, and then all of a sudden it was like, all this is happening. And I'm like, okay, I will come back to the feature. Um, And I think, you know, watching it and seeing how people react to it, um, especially we like, you know, premiered in New York City and that's like the predominant like Caribbean cultures are there so there was people like oh my gosh like the Dominican Spanish the Haitian Creole was like like spoken properly that's the first time in a Hollywood movie that they spoke Creole correctly you know and and I could see like the community really celebrated the film um and I would really want to put it on Broadway like I'm like I see it as this beautiful stage piece where it's like I can do more music with especially my Jonathan Montez, Juan Cosme, like those guys, like my Puerto Rican talented musicians. I'm like, we need to put more music out there. And I think to be able to play with that, especially for the stage would be very special and give it a home in New York where that's where it started. I think, I think it would would mean a lot you know so I think that's where I would like to take it I've never done Broadway before but I am willing to learn um because I did study theater uh yeah so I think that's where I see it being housed um I'm still exploring the feature because you know you gotta sometimes you just gotta try all the things and I and I realized especially you know I'm technically I'm graduating school this year Um, So I just delivered my thesis. So Sonia Dora was not my thesis to graduate. It was an extra film I did during my first year and it became this calling card. And um, now I'm trying to like keep that playfulness and that imagination and going for it, the big things. Why not try it? You know, I'm like, okay, I don't know the map to Broadway, but let's try it. Let's 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 make it a stage play and see what happens. So yeah. Yeah, um, I think for me, these these organizations, what they have done is this outside of yourself, someone is betting on you. You know, they're like, I see your potential and I'm we want to support you, whether it's finances or a grant or mentorship. And I think um, 
the film industry outside looking in, it can feel very daunting. You know, it's like, where do I start? How do I begin? Like, I don't have a million dollars to do a feature. And I think um, what has helped me when I have applied and submitted for programs, it's like, not only am I building my experiences, but it's showing me that you can do this. You know, as the budgets get bigger, it's like, you can do this. You're, you're doing it right now. And I think um, it's been a beautiful way to like, help you get the resources or get the steps you need to get to the next step, because I get it. Not everyone can go to film school, not everyone, you know, and I think the fact that there are like, you know, labs for screenwriting, labs for directing, um, programs that are like, we're looking for diverse filmmakers to, you know, give them a grant or help them shoot this short. It's like, they're helping us build that portfolio so we can get the bigger jobs and, and get that movie made. And um, it, it really means a lot to me because I think, you know, especially starting as an actor, I always felt like I was never seen for who I, I was, you know, I was um, always trying to play this, this role of like, okay, a black woman, that's all you can play. And I'm like, the fact that I was able to show my voice and show a story that centered Caribbean culture, Afro Latines, and dancing and music that was like original salsa that I got to hire people that love to make salsa to create. It it definitely just showed me like um, there is room for us. And sometimes we got to take up those space and create that space for ourselves. And it's beautiful that people that are coming before us or that have organizations to be like, Hey, we have a space. You you're, you're welcome to keep expanding on that space. So you can just nourish and nurture that voice. And I think, especially for storytellers, it's like our voice, that's, that's what we use. And when you get to really nurture it and, and have that nourishment to really play with that potential and see how far you can go. I think um, it's a breath of fresh air, but also like a boost of confidence, you know, I think from, I've been directing now for about two years, you know, I, I didn't study film. I, I studied it now, but I was a baby. I'm still a baby filmmaker, but I think when I lean towards my voice and when I started, I always tell people this, but like, if you, if you don't tell people you're playing the game, how can they pick you? So when I had moments of imposter syndrome or moments where I'm like, uh, I, I've never written a script by myself before. And I was like, just take the chance, let them know what you're trying to say and they'll help you if it's notes or help you shape it. Um, but sometimes we think we have to be really perfect for someone to bet on us. And it's not being perfect. It's being yourself and, and being that artist that you're trying to be. And people will kind of see that glimpse and see that potential and be like, okay, I want to bet on you. <laughs>